Hi, it's me, Jennifer Eichelberger, the book illustrator, and today I want to talk to you a little bit about my journey and why it is that I do what I do and share what I share. Okay, so I'll, <laughs> I'll tell you this. I went to school and got a degree in fine arts in the field of illustration, and I married my husband back oh it's going on it's almost it's 19 years this year oh we've been married a while anyway when we got married the sixth harry potter had just came out and we bought the book on our honeymoon and we were reading all the harry potter books together and as we read it I got the idea for my graphic novel where I was like, oh, wouldn't it be fun if there was a kid who he was embarrassed of his family who were magical, like he was a part of a magic family, and so instead decides to disguise his magic powers and become a superhero. So that's really where the gist of this idea came. At that time, I was working in-house as an illustrator. It was a full-time job. I loved it. I had great coworkers, a real good boss, and it really was a great place to work. And then I got pregnant with my first child. And I tell you what, it was this conundrum for me cuz I always wanted kids. I always wanted to be an illustrator as well. And I kept debating back and forth about, well, you know, I could still work and you know, do daycare for my kids. But eventually I decided, you know what, I think I really do want to be the person raising my kids. I didn't want to push that off on a daycare. I felt it was important that I be there at home with my kids to be the one nurturing them and raising them. So I quit my job to be an, a stay-at-home mom. When I quit my job, I thought, well, this will be f great because then I'll have more time to do my personal projects. When I was at work, I was doing so much illustrating and creative stuff that by the time I got home, I was kind of mentally exhausted from doing that. And so I didn't do too much work on my personal projects. So I was excited to do this work uh, my own project, like this story about the the magic kid that wants to be a superhero. I was excited to work on that project. But I tell you what, becoming a new mom, like there's, like no matter what you hear about it and how much you read about it, I honestly think that there's nothing that really prepares you for it, like other than being thrown in and being a mom yourself. Like that, that is the real life lesson right there is just doing it. I got feeling frustrated with it because I soon realized I couldn't really work too much on illustration or on this project because having a baby just takes up all all your time when you're a new mom. And if you actually have a break from, you know, taking care of your baby, it's taken up with nap time for me because it was exhausting. And it, I started just questioning everything. Like, really, is this, is this how it's going to be? Like, I'm going to be a mom raising kids and never get to work on my art again. Really, is that what it's been? I, I had always felt that I'd been blessed with these gifts and talents from God. I'd always felt that he had directed me and guided me all throughout my education and getting that job. All these things I had really felt guided by God. And then I felt as though now with being a mom, all of that was taken away from me. And I would have these arguments with God. And I'd get into it, and then I'd kind of feel bad about it, and I'd be like, okay, okay, I'm sorry. But then I'd still be angry about it. And this went on for a, like a year and a half, more than a year and a half after my first child was born. And it wasn't until one day 
um, we got our church magazines and there was uh, this magazine called The Enzyme and in there there was a uh, an article about this guy who was a pilot and he had always wanted to be a pilot ever since he was a kid and I'm like I can relate I've always wanted to be an illustrator an artist ever since I was a little child ever since watching Sleeping Beauty when I was in second grade and falling in love with it I'm like that is what I want to do and so I, I could relate someone who's had a passion for their whole life to do something and in this article, he talked about that, um, you know, he'd studied hard, he'd done all the work his whole life, and then he got to a point where he's all, it's almost time to get his pilot license, but the instructor that he was working under had, he was just rotten to work with, and it made him perform terribly, and so he couldn't, he couldn't work well. He wasn't going to be passing his test if he was going to be working under this instructor. And he felt so frustrated and felt so angry. He felt like God was taking this away from him. But it wasn't until he finally humbled himself enough and he got down and prayed and he said, all right, God, you know what? I'm willing to do whatever it is you want, even if it means not becoming a pilot I'm willing to accept whatever it is you have in store for me. And I read that and I thought, oh, whew, I've never given my will over to God. I've always talked about to him about what I wanted, but I've never just like given myself up to him. And so right then, upon reading this article, I, I set down the magazine and I walked upstairs to my little studio and I knelt down and I started just pouring my heart out. And I said, okay, God, I'm willing to do whatever it is you want me to do. If you want me to give up my art, I'm going to do it, whether it's while I'm raising kids or if it's forever. I will give that up for you, dear God. And then when I said this prayer, I felt this peace just come over me that just filled my heart, filled my that little room I was in. And I didn't hear any voice or see anything. But the words that formed in my head were, you don't have to give up your art, but thank you for giving me your heart. Such peace and clarity that I felt at that time. And even though I didn't, I, it wasn't like I was, I found the time to work on art or anything. I just had peace about it. <laughs> I'm like, okay, you know, maybe at this time while I'm taking care of a, this toddler, I might not have the kind of time I wish I had, but I felt peace about being able to, that I can do art, but that I'm doing it on the Lord's term, basically. Anyway, so that's just, that's the first instance I would say where I felt I felt God turning my heart, helping me turn to him. So moving on, I have two more children, so I have three total. And I've been working on this project off and on over the years. So, you know, after I had uh, said that prayer, it was like I said, it's not like I immediately started doing work or anything. But it was within the year that I got my first children's book um, deal where I got to do my first children's book illust illustration. Um, it's called Monday I Was a Monkey, A Tale of Reverence. People who are members of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints who have bought stuff from Deseret Book or Siegel Book might recognize this. And I got to do, I got my first job from the Friend magazine. Like I said, this project is the thing that I would always do but would get put on the back burner. And uh, and I, I tell you what, I've always had this desire to have, to be known for my work, for my illustration. The thing about that I would see happening in certain instances is people of faith, whatever faith that may be, that would get some kind of 
amount of fame or renown? Oftentimes, not always, oftentimes would renounce their faith. And I didn't like that. I was like, oh, I don't know. You know, getting kind of that status, if you're just going to end up renouncing your faith, I don't want that. Well, plus, Jesus in the Sermon of the Mount, he talks about, seek ye first the kingdom of God. Like, God knows you have need of everything, but seek first the kingdom of God, and then everything will be added unto it. So I tried to change my mind on this, my attitude about this desire for having that worldly renown in my field, but I couldn't shake it. And I ended up, the prayer I ended up saying to God was, okay, look, you know that this is what I want. I would love to be known for the work that I do, but if I lose my soul doing this, if I lose my soul to gain the world, like what value is that to me? Or if I lose my children's soul to win the world, like what value is that? It would be dross, right? It would be garbage. But I couldn't get myself to change my mind on this. It wasn't until this one night, my husband was at home taking care of the kids and I was out doing some errands and I had stopped to fill my van with gas. And while I was there, I just got thinking and contemplating about my life, about how good it was. Like, my, I have a wonderful supporting husband who's got a great job. We have our house, a couple of cars, three great kids. And I just thought how great my life is. We really have everything that we need. We're able to go visit my in-laws about once a year in Florida. You know, it, it's fantastic. And all of a sudden, a thought entered my head that had never happened before. The thought of becoming famous made my stomach turn. Like I, I physically felt ill thinking about becoming famous. I was like, oh, I don't want that. I, ugh, for real, no thanks. And so while filling up the van, I'm like, okay, God, I'm good the way I am. I don't need fame. I don't need renown, outside renown. I'm good the way I am. Thank you. Thank you, dear Lord. You know, and I don't have to keep doing illustration or, or even do this project that I love, that I feel would be something that maybe could put me into that sphere. And again, I felt the Spirit, the Holy Spirit come upon me. And again, words formed in my head that went, this is good for you to feel this way, to feel the gratitude, to feel that you don't need to have the illustration or the, the outside validation from other people. This is good. But you have talents and you need to share them. And so I'm like, okay, yeah, yeah, that's true. So I, I do need to keep going with this. I've been working on this project for so many years, like too many years. <laughs> like I should have finished this a long time ago. But the thing is, I it was first a novel. And then uh, a few years back, it hit me that no, this needs to be a graphic novel. I am an illustrator, you know, I got my degree in illustration. Uh, that's my strength. I need to make it a graphic novel. And I'm like, oh, I don't know how to make a graphic novel. But I just started studying and figuring out how to do it. My graphic novel is coming along. And I am going to be posting more about graphic novels. And I'm going to be telling more about faith and belief in God. Because honestly, I feel that that is more important like to lead people to Christ. I feel like that is honestly my calling. If I can do it by sharing a graphic novel, that makes it even better. I love it. So you're welcome for the ride. And I invite you to come along, pray to God, find him, and find your own calling in life, whatever that is. Is it illustration? Is it something completely different? I don't know. What is it? But uh, thanks for coming. And we'll talk to you in the next one. Bye.